Good morning, folks, and welcome, and thank you for joining us to our final broadcast in our 2012 webinar series. Today we're going to be talking about developing rough cut capacity planning in a job shop environment. This is a case study from an ongoing project that I'm doing at one of my clients, Ytech Industries in Rahway, New Jersey. A couple housekeeping things. If you have a question during the webinar, feel free to raise your hand. That's on the control panel on the right-hand side. And I will take questions as we go through. Or you can wait until the end, and I'll hang around for a couple minutes after the end of the webinar. So here we go. Here's what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to look at what rough cut capacity planning is the data that you need in order to perform rough cut capacity planning, how to capture that data in a job shop environment, and finally, how rough cut capacity planning, when combined with master scheduling, can improve on-time delivery performance. So let's get to the classic definition of what rough cut capacity planning is. According to the American Production and Inventory Control Society, commonly referred to as APEX, it is the process of converting the schedule into requirements for key resources. Now, the interesting thing in a job shop environment, what is a key resource today may not be a key resource tomorrow, depending on the jobs that are coming in, and the work centers that are required to complete those jobs. So you can literally have one operation be a bottleneck, a key resource today, and a week from now, that same operation will not be a bottleneck, it will not have very much work to do, and some other work center in your operation will be a key resource. So in a job shop environment, what we look to do is understand the rough cut capacity of every work center because sooner or later in that environment every work center is going to become a key resource. And bear with me, the computer is kind of slow today. So I want to ask a couple questions here. So we're going to do an online poll. You see the poll that's on there now. What I want you to do is take a look at the question. What data is needed to do rough cut capacity planning in a job shop environment? You have four potential answers there. I want you to take a minute and check on each one that you believe is a requirement data-wise to do rough cut capacity planning in this environment. So if you would please make your selections and in about 60 seconds I'll close the poll down and we'll see where we go. Okay, I've got, looks like one more person that hasn't answered the poll that's up there. So you got about 15 seconds left to make your selection. Okay, I'm closing down the poll now. And let's see the results. All right, 100% of you that answered said that you need to know what each work center's capacity is. And yes, that is a definite. You have to know that. In a job shop environment, we can have capacity at a work center that is driven by the number of machines that you have, or 
You can have capacity that is driven by the number of people that you have. In the environment that we are in in YTech, we have both. Most of the work centers are labor-based work centers, so how many people times how many hours a day times how many days a week. But there are a few work centers that are machine-based. We have one operator that can be running several machines simultaneously. Okay, the next highest. 86% of you said that you need setup and runtime for each operation. Definitely. Without that, you have no idea of what your load potential is going to be. Now, in a job shop environment, due to the nature of the beast, you have many new jobs that are coming in that you have never done before. But in a job shop environment, those jobs are also quoted before you actually get the order. So what we've done at YTech is set up a process that the quoting process for every operation creates setup and run times for the job. We put them in a file, and if we are fortunate enough to win the business, when the order comes in, we then take that file and use it for the labor standards for these brand new jobs and put it into the routers that we then put into our manufacturing control system. Now, we struggled for a while getting all of the jobs in production with ballot labor standards. So basically what we did, we put a hard stop in the entire process. We have an operation now that once the order is placed, it is reviewed to make sure that every value added step in the process for that job has a labor standard in it that we can hang our hat on. So in doing that, in that hard stop, we went from 70 to 80 percent of our jobs having labor standards to now, since we put the hard stop in several months ago, every one of our jobs has ballot, ballot uh, setup and run times in them. The next item, and it's a tie here between job scheduled and what's currently in the work center. Let's deal with jobs scheduled. This is our jobs that we already have in the system that just haven't gotten to a particular work center. In our system, we track these. We can use that information to plan the load on every work center in our manufacturing stream. Now, the last item here, what's currently running at each work center, that actually is not something that in true rough cut capacity planning, if you go back to the Apex Dictionary, that you need to or even want to consider. Rough cut capacity planning, the textbook definition of it, says that it totally ignores what is in the work center right now. The reason this works is because rough cut capacity planning isn't trying to tell you what you have available today, tomorrow, or this week. What it's trying to give you a, sh a heads up on is what is your capacity at some point in the foreseeable future, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks out. Having said that, and that is textbook, at YTEC, we actually had to include some of the currently running jobs that were in the work center. And the reason that we had to do this was in a handful of our work centers, we have jobs that are very large and we produce X number of units per hour, per day, per week, pretty much running continuously 365 days a year. What we found was if we excluded those jobs, we never truly 
got a good representation of what our rough cut capacity planning was. We always looked like we were running significantly underutilized. So when we found this out, we developed a way to add in these constant runners into our load profile. And we only do this for a handful of jobs. I believe there are only like 12 or 13 jobs that fall, in, fall into this category. So we were able to put this information in and get a more valid, more accurate rough cut capacity plan. Okay, so let's continue on. So that's how we set up the rough cut capacity planning. And to review that, we developed the capacity, whether it was labor-based or machine-based capacity for every work center. Then we found a way, developed a way, to make sure that no job got entered into our production system unless it had valid standards for every value-added operation. Then using our ERP system, we were able to calculate the jobs that are going to be arriving at a work center. And finally, we did a unique thing of finding our constant running jobs that are always there and added them into the rough cut capacity plan. So now, how do we get improved delivery performance? And as I said at the beginning, this is an ongoing project at YTEC. We are just now in the final stage of turning on rough cut capacity planning and master scheduling. Here's what rough cut capacity planning, when used with master scheduling, can accomplish in, approve, in improving your delivery times. First of all, our master scheduler at YTEC is also part of the quoting process for new jobs. So when we look at quoting something that we've never done before, or even quoting a repeat job that we actually have the data on, we can look at the rough cut capacity plan look at when the customer would like delivery, figure out if we have any bottlenecks based on our current load, and quote accordingly to quote a more realistic completion date. The second thing, if we assume that now we've got the business that we just quoted using this process, that time lag in between when we gave our customer the quotation and when they actually place the order with us can be several hours, several days, or several weeks. The days and weeks, that presents a problem because we are not a static organization. We have new orders coming in all the time. So the rough cut capacity plan, what that allows us to do when the job hits the master scheduler when it's been entered in, before he releases it to production, he does another rough cut capacity check on what are, at that point, the bottleneck work centers. And if he has a problem, he knows it before he puts the job into production. He is then working with the production managers and the work center supervisors and our customer service people, able to start resolving the problem before it even gets to the bottleneck work center. That capability of spotting a problem before it happens is one of the key components for improving delivery. Because if we know we're going to have a problem two weeks from now, and we're starting already to take action to resolve it, odds are we're going to be able to make that problem go away. And the third point in how rough cut capacity planning can enhance our on-time delivery. If you've been with these webinars that I've been doing now for the past six months, you've heard of our implementation of paired overlapping cards with 
authorization. This is a component of Surrey's quick response manufacturing. Getting a better handle on the jobs before they get into the system is going to allow us to better utilize the POCA system, which controls the movement of material between work centers. That better utilization of POCA will help us again meet the delivery dates that we promised our customer at a higher percentage of time. So here's what we've covered. We've looked at how we implement it, or technically are still implementing rough cut capacity planning at YTEC Industries in Rahway. We went through a definition of rough cut capacity planning. It's only looking for problems at bottleneck work centers. We looked at how we did the types of data that we needed to do rough cut capacity planning and how we took some approaches at YTEC to capture that data in this environment. And then finally we wrapped up with a look at how rough cut capacity planning in conjunction with master scheduling and some other processes that we've already implemented will help us going into the future to be able to meet our delivery dates that we promised to our customer, get better on-time delivery performance, and the goal here is better on-time delivery, more business for YTEC. So I want to thank you all very much for attending our webinar today. Uh, as I indicated at the start, this is the last in our 2012 series of broadcasts. We will be starting our 2013 series of webinars on supply chain management issues in early January of 2013. We're going to take a couple months off to look at the next things we want to talk about. And if you have any questions, raise your hand. I will be more than happy to stay on the line for as long as it takes. If not, have a good day, folks.